Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. Mademoiselle V. In the Costume of an Espada by Edouard Manet. Manet hints at the deeper meaning of his painting in the title Mademoiselle V. in the Costume of an Espada. This masterpiece puts on a show for viewers. We know that partially from the term costume. Also, if you're into Goya, you may recognize this as an homage to his Toro Maquille series. Though it honors the Spanish master's work, this is no copy. Manet gave his favorite model, Victorine Moron, a pink rather than a red cape. She's also shod in footwear that no bullfighter would be caught dead in, bows and all. Manet doesn't present Mademoiselle V in this out-of-context manner just to mess with viewers. He's reminding us that artwork is performance. In fact, this is my favorite example of a masterpiece that seems to be winking at me. Victorine plays the role of Spanish matador, but she's half-hearted. Look at how she holds her baton and cape. It's as if Manet said, hold these and ended the instruction there. So she just went with it, and as time passed, while he was painting, her arms drooped from the weight. Of course, I've heard other theories from art historians and art lovers. For instance, some see Victorine in Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada as a painter. This scenario points to the matador baton as her paintbrush, and the sagging cape bundle her palette. The idea fits into a subset of the popular notion that artists are essentially narcissists who perpetually paint themselves. I get it, but it's not my view of Manet. He was an iconoclast with a vision, and he disrupted gender norms before anybody had a clue what that even meant. So maybe there's an element of painter to Victorine's pose but it's a bit reductive to sum up the whole masterpiece with this one observation. The scene Manet sets in this painting make this portrait into more of a story. At front, Victorine, aka Mademoiselle V, plays dress up as a matador in a posed performance. It's a playful facade, like a smile that breaks a tense moment with some welcome relief. We know this thanks to Manet's setting. He distinguishes the foreground from background with a radical difference in painting style. Mademoiselle V in a costume of espada marries a polished, realistic portrait with loose and sketchy action at the back. Victorine poses in an awkward stillness, putting on a fanciful show while behind her we see the raw action of a matador stabbing bulls. There's a dark story of man versus beast that lives within a bullfight. Men and animals are hurt and even killed in this ring, but Manet sets that at the back in the recesses of the painting. It's the fundamental story behind what Victorine plays at. But thanks to Manet's positioning here, This plot dwells at an unconscious level for the viewer. This reminds me of how every great performance works on both a conscious and unconscious level. As the audience, we know that it's a show, and the performers aren't actually having these experiences. Yet, in truly great storytelling and acting, we also believe it's happening, and it feels real. 
That's our unconscious at work, letting us play a game of pretend for the sake of entertainment. Meanwhile, the actors are delving into their unconscious worlds as well, so that they can give us a stellar performance. Manet unearths this sense of showtime in Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada. It's what makes this more than just a glorious gender bender in oil on canvas, and yet another Manet masterpiece. Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada, FAQs. Why did Edouard Manet paint Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada? Although we can't time travel to 1862 or mind read Manet, there are some clues to why he painted Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada. If you look at Goya's Toro Machia series, there's an evident parallel. So it's likely Manet was inspired by Goya's work when he painted the background for Mademoiselle V. Manet also loved to play with gender norms, and many of his works were quite modern. He dresses his favorite model, Victorine Moron, in matador clothing and props here. This points to the performative nature of art, as well as the pretension of gender norms. Manet was a master of big ideas like this, even in the mid-1800s. Where can I see Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada in person? The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City houses Manet's Mademoiselle V in the costume of an espada in Gallery 810. It's an absolute delight in person. This painting is almost life-size at about 5 by 4 feet. Also, the salmon-colored walls set off Mademoiselle V's pink cape to perfection. It's a room of great portraits, and this one stands out for the modernity of Manet's vision. A must-see in person. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady Kayflow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.